Good evening, guys. Hi. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Happy New Year. Uh, yeah, I'm here to uh, take part in the Vinyl Tag 2021, uh, which has been uh, very kindly compiled together from Andrew from Tales from the Crate. So thank you, Andrew, for doing that. Um, yeah, and I'd just like to say, uh, for me, this is quite a special uh, occasion because it marks uh, my first the anniversary of my f first ever video that I did for the VC which was also a vinyl tag video uh, for 2020 of course um, so uh, yeah I feel like I've gone kind of full circle really um, but yeah really really enjoyed the ride so far with the VC um, met some wonderful people um, uh, sort of you know online friendships I guess um, really really interesting uh, you know uh, people lots and lots of uh, ideas for record buying uh, you know taking me in directions that I would never have hitherto have gone so I've learned an awful lot and um, yeah a lot of warmth and uh, and uh, good good vibes all around so yeah really really enjoy that Anyway, guys, this is the second attempt. <laughs> this is actually my second attempt of doing this um, because, unfortunately, I'm, I am strictly limited to 30 minutes on my phone. So I have to rattle through these quite quickly. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to find myself splitting this up over two videos, which I've done previously on fines videos and so on. I definitely don't want to do that um, because it's just crap continuity and rubbish for you guys because you have to sit and... Uh, watch two videos so obviously I'm going to avoid that okay so uh, let's let's uh, not waste any more time and crack on with this okay so a new discovery of 2020 obviously but is not a new release okay so this technically wasn't a discovery um, but uh, obviously saw um, Alan at Static Traveller show this earlier last year this is uh the, the uh, uk band circulus and this is clocks are like people uh this is an album i believe from 2006 uh yeah circulus if you're not familiar with them they're a um uh, sort of retro sounding uh, folk rock uh, sort of slightly psych uh, psych tinged proggy yeah kind of pro progressive uh band uh monday band that uh sort of evoke the spirit uh and the energy of that kind of early um uh, early sort of prog folk rock music uh, certainly from the uk uh that was kind of uh you know around in the early 70s and they do it really really well um and it's very authentic um and there's sort of all sorts of maog synthesizers on this um, nice vocals, um, yeah, good uh, good songs. Some of them draw out a little bit, obviously, with the, the more proggy kind of feel. Um, but really, really enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly look out for... Uh, that's the gatefold. Um, you know, if I come across them, I'd probably pick up uh, another because I think they've done several albums, um, both before and after this. So... Uh, yeah, so that's Circulus and Clocks Are Like People. Um, um, nice discovery f from last year. Okay, a quarantine buy. Okay, so obviously when we're in the depths of lockdown, um, I obviously wasn't going to be able to go into any shops or anything, um, but this was one that Ben posted to me. Um, I'd actually seen it in the shop beforehand. He'd probably had this for 12 months and I hadn't sold it. Um, but uh, I remember seeing it and, and, and uh, streaming it and really, really enjoying it. Uh, this is Del Shannon and a reissue of his uh, Psych album, The Further Adventures of Charles Westover. Charles Westover obviously being Del Shannon's real name. Um, yeah, and just wonderful, wonderful track songs on this. Very different from his original uh, song, Runaway. Um uh the, the obviously the big hit that he had back in the early 60s uh this is from 1968 uh, and it's got the uh song i don't know whether it was a hit but uh it was uh it's a song called gemini uh which is the first track on side two fantastic song um but there really isn't a bad uh bad track on this so uh 
yeah, uh, really, really pleased uh, to have got that, particularly in the uh, heart of lockdown. Okay, um, a ALP that you want to find in 2021. Okay, well, last year um, I discovered this guy. Uh, this is Duncan Brown. Okay, Duncan Brown is a Baroque uh, uh, song singer, songwriter that emerged in the late 60s. Um, a British artist, um, wonderful uh, nylon string, plays nylon string classical guitar. Uh, sort of baroque uh, feel um, or sensibility certainly where he, where he's coming from this is his second album from 1973 which I was uh, fortunate to pick up um, and um, yeah the uh, album that I would really dearly love though is the album that he did before this which was his debut uh, which was called uh, Give Me Take You and that's from 1968 it was actually released on intermediate records uh, in the uk uh, which obviously the same label as like the small faces and so on um beautiful beautiful baroque pop psych album um very rare um i have seen copies online but they go for three figures um but if i saw one even if it was not in the greatest of condition and it was reasonably priced i would dearly love to snap it up um, I do believe it's reissued, but I think currently it's only available on CD. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, so that would be a, that'd be a nice one to find. Okay, a box set. Okay, I think I did show this um, on one of my earlier videos last year. This is a box set that I picked up that came out uh, a couple of years ago now. Um, this is the Fleet Foxes first collection. So this is a box set of uh, everything that the Fleet Foxes did up to and including their first uh, studio self-titled um, full-length album. So that was all the EPs, singles, um, uh, etc, etc. So um, yeah, uh, really, really pleased to, to pick this up. Obviously uh, Fleet Foxes don't get an awful lot of love in the VC or I, if they are, people don't tend to show them. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, the first album in particular I had on CD and I just listened to endlessly. Uh, it came out in 2009, I believe. Uh, I think it was 2009. Um, and I was in a very high pressure job at the time uh, and the kind of um, bucolic kind of um, uh, sort of pastoral feel of their music really, really resonated and I found incredibly relaxing and had a calming kind of feel on me um, and yeah I love love their stuff um, their earlier stuff on the EPs uh, a little bit rawer um, but no less interesting um, and uh, obviously that those been long deleted because I think they were kind of limited pressings so obviously when this came out I was very very pleased to uh, to pick up a, a copy of that so okay um right a concept album um this just happens to be <laughs> another box uh so this is uh godling cream and consequences okay so this came out in 1977 uh obviously probably a lot of you know log cream and kevin godley were two of the uh two of the members of ten, uh, the four members of ten uh, the original 10 cc um, they stayed with them for four albums um, after they'd recorded How Dare You, their fourth album. In 76, they decided to leave the band and pursue a solo career, basically to uh, further uh, the uh, progression of the gizmo, which was a, um, a tool, uh, a guitar tool that Log Cream had designed to fit onto the bridge of the guitar, which there's a picture of it in there. Okay, um, and this was basically because they couldn't afford to, uh, they couldn't afford to um, uh, an orchestra back in the early days and they always wanted strings and so on. I think they, they were always big kind of show, uh, interest, like the big shows, Rogers and Hammerstein shows and so on. And they always wanted the, like the idea of having a big orchestra. 
so uh, yeah, that was kind of uh, a concept that they wanted to look to promote to uh, fill the need for people that wanted to record, I guess, uh, that couldn't uh, afford an orchestra. I was these little wheels on on the machine that would uh, basically resonate the strings and give um, uh, give like uh, uh, sort of endless sustain. So uh, anyway, so but the concept of sorry, I've got off the miles off the point as I usually do. Um, so the concept of the album is basically a um, uh, it's a, a group of people that get together in an office. Um, which uh, of which the, the two characters, um, it's basically Peter Cook who does all the uh, vocal, uh, who actually wrote the libretto for this uh, and the the, uh, the narrative, and he's taking the part of all the characters um, and does it in, with great comic aplomb. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Peter Cook, really enjoy his work. Uh, and uh, yeah. So um, they, they, they kind of, these characters get together as a couple who are getting divorced. And there's, so there's a kind of solicitor and uh, there's the husband and the wife. Um, and then there's this guy called Mr. Blint who lives downstairs. And Mr. Blint is writing a, uh, a, um, a concerto on the piano, uh, which is going to uh, allay the... Um, uh, and calm the storm of the weather of uh, which is is taking over the planet and destroying the planet uh so it's basically it's kind of a, a sort of ecological um sort of quite prophetic as a sort of ecological story um you know sort of obviously long before sort of global warming and um you know the position that obviously we find ourselves now with the planet um so yeah it's uh, it sort of resonates even though the music, some of it might be slightly dated, uh, certainly the concept is uh, is still very, very much relevant now. So, um, yeah, but uh, if you can find it, I don't think it's ever been issued on CD, uh, but if you can find find it, it's, uh, it's an int interesting piece and uh, worth checking out. Okay, um, so a album where an artist had changed directions. Okay, um, this one came to mind. This is uh, Kate Bush, the Dreaming. Yada yada yada. Everybody's everybody's dog shows seems to show this album. Um, but yeah, certainly um, uh, after the Dreaming, uh, after sorry, after the um, the third album, uh, which is called Never Forever, <laughs> brain fart there. Uh, which is believed is historic for being the first album uh, by a female UK artist to go to number one. Uh, so obviously, big commercial success, and then uh, comes out with this album a couple of years later, which is very, very left of field. Um, again, using the kind of Fairlight and sort of samples, strange sounds, noises, didgeridoos, um, sort of um, ghostly voices. Um, uh, sort of cathartic screams and just all sorts going on here. Um, very, very dark, um, but compelling listen. Um, and uh, I think it was uh, Björk who cited this as a sort of seminal uh, influence and I think one of her all-time favourite albums. So, uh, yes, a uh, very, very different... Uh, to, uh, very different direction taken there by, by Kate. Okay, um, so where are we? Uh, a white label promo. Okay, um, so at the risk of repeating myself, yes, it's uh, BG's Odessa again. I showed this on my last video, I think, or a video before. Um, but unfortunately, it is the only album I have as a white label promo. So there you go. Uh, I think this is a, a US release. Um, there you go. Uh, yeah, I don't collect... Uh, white label promos i was just i've just been looking for this album for a long long time and the copy that turned up i was gonna grab it with both hands uh, and it just happens to be a white label promo so but uh, okay compilation album um i've got a few compilation albums uh but this is definitely uh, uh one that's a favorite uh, this is the four seasons uh story 
So this is a double album of their sort of mainly their 60s hits. Okay, and it's a sort of typical 70s packaging there with the sort of um, uh, sort of uh, textured cover, which is quite nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this came out uh, 1975, um, prior to, uh, I think it was uh, Who Loves You, their album. Um, but yeah, it's got all the great hits, Sherry, Big Girls Don't Cry, um, Ragdoll, Beggin. Um, yeah, fabulous. Um, great, great album by a fantastic band. Okay. Um, right, okay. Uh, an album that tells a story. Okay, so about 30 years ago, uh, my brother had just come back from uh, traveling in Europe and he had a friend who was uh, very into Brazilian music and he uh, actually uh, had a compilation tape which he bought uh, back and played, subsequently played me and absolutely blew me away. Loved the uh, sounds of the, uh, just, just yeah, just all these Tropicalia artists, people I've never heard before, Katana Veloso, uh, Yogi Ben, uh, Gal Costa, just names that hitherto before listening to this didn't mean anything to me at all, but just this fantastic music, albeit all in, sung in Portuguese, but just had this depth of feeling and uh, uh, just the, the sheer brilliance of the performances uh, just blew me away. Um, and he was just, I looked at the title, it was just called Brazil. Um, there was no, nothing else on it. That's all I had to go by, basically. So, and obviously this is in the days before the internet, so it was very hard to kind of look up. But every time I went into a music shop, I would look around the Brazilian section, see if I could see nothing wrong any bells. Uh, and then about sort of November time, uh, last year, uh, I was in Stratford just after the, uh, just before the last lockdown. And I was in a, a charity shop and they had about three or four albums nothing great uh just sort of compilations or um you know sort of um easy listening the usual stuff that uh, you find here in the uk in uh in the charity shops and i just asked the girl I said have you got anything any any other albums and she said yeah there's some i think in a box behind this curtain she pulled the curtain back yeah lo and behold there was a box flicking through the albums and the usual you know beaten up classical records etc um, and then I found this, and this is Belisa Tropical, and it was Brazil Classics 1 uh, compiled uh, as a compilation put together by David Byrne of Talking Heads. And the penny still didn't drop, but it was, because uh, I, I didn't know the titles of the songs, but obviously I was looking at the artists. They look very, very similar uh, from what I can remember. Uh, and uh, yeah, took it back home, and um yeah played it from the first three songs i knew that it was the same compilation <laughs> that i'd listened to all those years before and uh yeah so finally purely by accident i find this album that i've been looking for for 30 years which is kind of uh uh yeah it was just bizarre really but there you go um, I often talk about ser the use the word serendipity and I think that's a, a classic example of, of that occurring so yeah delighted to uh, finally bag that okay um, an album that needs a vinyl pressing um, yeah uh, Supergrass in it for the money 1997 a second studio album um, big big fan of Supergrass um, yeah, they sort of emerged out of the UK Brit pop scene. Um, but for me, they were one of the most interesting bands. Uh, certainly preferred them to Oasis. Um, yeah, they were coming from sort of very influenced by the Beatles and that kind of late 60s rock pop kind of uh, um, sensibility. Obviously, the glam thing with the T-Rex was a heavy influence for the singer Gaz Coombs as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, this fantastic album in its own right, very original songwriting, um, a lot, lot better for me than the debut, which was kind of like a faux punk album. I didn't particularly like that, although the single all right, I thought was pretty good. 
Um, but yeah, would dearly, dearly love to see a, a reissue of this. Um, maybe it has now. I don't know. I don't really look uh, that often. Like last time I did, it hadn't. Um, um, if they, because I've got several of their albums on CD, uh, I would love to have a if they reissued them as a box set. Uh, be fantastic so yeah uh, that would be a great uh, um, be very very happy to see that as a reissue and get that finally bagged out on vinyl um, okay uh, a common album and an uncommon album okay uh, this is certainly common in the UK and isn't it always the way once you've bought an album or found an album you tend to then just see it all the time uh, so this is Francois Hardy in English um, Exactly what it says basically her songs uh, that she re-recorded uh, in English language in the English rather than French um, and uh, yeah it's on this marble arch cheap uh, cheap label um, UK label um, but yeah I just see this all the time now um, France was hardy records aren't always that easy to pick up um, I am slowly collecting them and as I see them uh, which isn't that often I do pick them up but uh, yeah see this one all the time uh, for very very cheap so okay an album that's uh, less common um, I tend to uh, I don't uh, I, I tend to buy uh, albums when I see them now because I've learned the hard way that if you don't buy them when you see them you often don't see them again um, and that's certainly the case with this um, I'd seen this shown on the VC uh, several years ago, streamed it and absolutely loved it. Uh, this is Farewell Older Baron uh, by Judy Hensk and Jerry Yester. Um, this is a fantastic uh, psych folk album from the late six, uh, from 1969, I think. Um, I think they did do another album after this. Uh, this is a husband, basically this husband and wife. Um, Jerry Yester was part of the, uh, who was a member of the Loving Spoonful. Uh, left. Um, Judy Hensk is a kind of um, uh, soul singer, uh, soul singer, folk singer, sorry. Um, and they got together married, had a child. And that's the front cover in negative. And that's the actual photo on the back uh, in full colour. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic album. Uh, every single song is different, very eclectic, highly original. Doesn't sound like anything else I've ever heard. Um, it's kind of visceral in places, very delicate in others. There's sort of uh, pastiches on here. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant album. Um, highly recommend it. Okay, uh, where are we? Uh, okay, an EP. Okay, uh, I don't think this is technically an EP, but it's a 12 inch single with three songs on it. So I suppose that does constitute an EP. Uh, I don't collect 45s anymore anyway I haven't for years but uh, this is the house of love so this is Guy Chadwick's band um, yeah um, I think another band from Oxfordshire not altogether too sure uh, I was very big in them back in the day uh, this came out in 1988 I think uh, went to see them uh, in Birmingham uh, with my brother um, excellent band live uh, this single, uh, this was a single, I Don't Know Why I Love You, um, which is a pretty good. Um, but the B-side, uh, Secrets and I Can't Stand It, a great sort of visceral version of uh, Lou Reed, uh, Velvet Underground song, I Can't Stand It, um, that was uh, issued on that VU compilation that came out in the 80s. Fantastic song. Um, yeah, I always really enjoyed that one. Okay, Girl Group. Um, yeah, a bit obvious, I guess, but... Uh, Bangles, fantastic uh, 80s, uh, 80s band, of course, um, but with uh, sort of 60s pop sensibility, um, and they did it very, very well. Uh, this is a wonderful album, Manic Monday, uh, I think it's their second album. Uh, Walk Like an Egyptian as well, superb uh, single. Uh, well, both of those fantastic singles. Um, yeah, um, great, great band. And still going, I believe. Okay, uh, an album cover that you love. There's a lot of album covers that I love. Um, this one in particular, though, uh, I just think evokes perfectly the music within. Um, this is David Crosby's debut album, If Only I Could Remember My Name, from 1971. 
fabulous, fabulous cover um, of David there uh, staring out over the sea. Uh, no doubt, I guess, from his boat, because uh, I believe he was a keen, uh, a keen sailor, had his own own boat. Uh, but yeah, it's just the wonderful kind of ethereal photo with the kind of the, the, the dual shot with this kind of second picture overlaid of the setting sun, almost like kind of tears coming down here. Wonderful, wonderful uh, cover, quite uh, simple, but just really, really effective. And um, yeah, fabulous uh, album as well to go with the uh, with the cover. Okay, um, right, let's just have a look. Uh, where are we? Uh, album you've listened to the most? Very quickly because I've shown this album lots of times. Um, yeah, uh, Ten CC Sheet Music, um, absolutely wonderful. Um, Lovely album from 1974, fantastic, uh, easily the, my favourite album of theirs. Um, you can pick it up cheap as chips, uh, pound, two pound or even less. Uh, I see it all the time. Um, great idiosyncratic kind of pop. Um, and uh, they mix and matched with the songwriting on this, so it doesn't sound like any other album that they ever did. Um, but yeah, I've listened to this more than any other album probably over the last... 35 years or so. Okay, um, uh, album you had to get an OG copy of. I didn't have to get an OG copy of this, but it just happens to be an OG copy. I picked this up back in the 80s. I think I paid about six quid for it. It's uh, Canterbury Classic from 1971, Caravan in the Land of Grey and Pink. Uh, a lot of people know of this album. Um, it's not scarce, but it tends to go for a few quid. So, uh, on the Deram label. Um, but the wonderful thing about getting original copies is that you often get little hidden goodies inside. Like, so when I got this home and uh, looked in the gatefold, there was a concert program from 1975. Um, the advert there by uh, for Curved Air that were big in the mid 70s. Uh, pictures of the band and so on. And advert there for an album that they had at the time, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, wonderful, wonderful stuff there. Uh, okay, last album you purchased. Okay, I'm going to have to rush this because time's getting on. Uh, this was Blue For You. I'm um, not a big Quo fan, um, but I saw this very, very cheap, uh, and it was in Good Nick, and uh, I particularly like the full version of Mystery Song. It's the last track on the album. It's got kind of birdsy kind of guitar on it um, and it's not a bad album um, in the days when status quo I guess were a, a full-on rock band um, not doing their kind of covers and uh, sort of karaoke stuff that they tend to do now um, okay uh, okay an album they don't get a lot of people don't get this one this is Lindsay DePaul surprise uh, this is a debut album from 1972 I really like this album uh, she was a model uh, singer songwriter played piano very talented pretty girl as well of course um yeah uh, well worth checking out if you don't have it a uh, punk album the closest thing you have to it um that's probably this one uh, this is do little by the pixies 1989 fantastic influenced uh kurt cobain and a myriad of other bands as well from that period um wonderful wonderful stuff um and a favourite 2020 reissue. Okay, um, this is a favourite uh, um, well, it it, favorite jazz. I've been getting into jazz last few months, really, really enjoying jazz, um, partly due to you guys uh, showing them with the Blue Note series. Been really, really enjoying that. Uh, this was a lovely uh, present from my mum, her blesser. Uh, it's Dexter Gordon Go, classic title, obviously, uh, very melodic. Uh, Bop Jazz, really, really enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, but uh, not from 2020, but it is a reissue. So yeah, uh, sorry guys, I'm going to rush that. Really, really uh, glad to have taken part in this. Thanks again to Andrew and everybody else, obviously, who's uh, going to take part. I've seen a few videos already. They've all been really, really interesting. And uh, all the best and speak to you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.